once and for all, how to do them properly, whether you should or shouldn't be doing crunches, and then why I haven't done crunches for about three years now. Hey everybody, how you all doing? Now today, I'm gonna talk about everything to do with crunches so that this can literally be the last video you ever have to watch about crunches. We're gonna start by looking exactly how to do crunches properly, once and for all, without back pain, without neck pain. This is very important because once you know how to do a crunch, you can then do many other exercises where you also need to be on your back properly without further injuring yourself. After that, I'm gonna talk about why crunches has been getting a bad rep and whether you should be doing crunches at all. And then at the end, I'm gonna talk about why I haven't done crunches for probably around three years now and show you five of the best non-crunch abdominal exercises. But let's get going by looking at how to do a crunch properly once and for all. Now most people overcomplicate crunches. It is in fact a very easy, simple exercise and a very small movement. So let me get my back so I can actually show you how to do this. Let me try and get this from the side because it's gonna give you a better idea of what's actually going on here. Number one, bring your feet. If you can touch your hands with your feet, that is close enough. Don't get obsessed with, should it be there, should it be there? It's not a big issue, okay? Just bring them up. If you can touch them with your toes, that's a good position for them to be in. Here is the most important thing about crunches and any exercise that you do on your back. Your lower back needs to be pushed into the floor. If, you, if there is any gap here, that's when you're gonna start getting lower back pain. And that can sometimes come because your abdominals just aren't strong enough yet. So you need to make sure that your lower back is pushed into the floor and that will already start to crunch your abs slightly. Then I like to put my hands here. You can put them literally wherever you want to, but I'll put them here today so you can actually see how small this movement is. And then guys, from here, you are simply gonna crunch your abs, okay? It's not a big movement. You simply want that bottom of your rib cage to the top of your pelvis to come towards each other. So you basically just gonna do this, lower back into the floor. And as you can see, this is where my starting position is. You're not starting from here, okay? So this is where you are. You're always gonna keep tension on your abdominal wall. And then from here, you just crunch your abs, okay? As hard as you can, and that's it. Back to there. Don't come all the way back here. This is when you start getting issues with your back and your back starts paining, okay? So from here, lower back into the floor, and then try and keep your head neutral. Don't do this, you don't need to tuck it in, and don't do that. Try and keep it nice and neutral, and then from there, crunch it, and back down. Crunch it, and back down. And that, guys, is a crunch. It's not rocket science, it's not complicated. There's a few things we need to look at here that your lower back needs to be into the floor. Don't pull on your head, don't pull on your ears, don't do any of those kind of things, and then it's a very small movement. Okay, one thing I wanna show you, because we're gonna talk about this in a second. Okay, check this out. Okay, spinal flexion. What is spinal flexion? It is your spine doing this, okay? I want you to have a look at how little spinal flexion there is here, okay? From there to there, okay? Very small amount of spinal flexion. Why am I telling you this? Well, let's move on to the second part of this video, and that is why some people say crunches are really bad for you. It comes down to what we call excessive amounts and excessive spinal flexion. It's your back really flexing a lot. And there's been research studies showing that that can be really bad for you. And let's make no mistake about it, excessive amounts of spinal flexion can be bad for you. Even worse, if you already have very tight abdominal muscles or bad posture from sitting at a desk already, you'd be better off to actually make sure you counter that with things like hyperextensions or at least abdominal stretches. But Excessive amount of spinal flexion is what's bad for you, an excessive amount. Now, as you've seen with the crunch, there really isn't that much spinal flexion, okay? And we'll talk about that in a second. Secondly, you'll know that if you have a proper designed workout program, 
you never should be doing more than 15 to 20 reps because then it becomes too easy. You should move on to something that's a little bit harder. So if you do a crunch properly, like I've just shown you, and you have a proper workout program, this is never going to be an issue. Spinal flexion is never going to be an issue. So why all these problems with spinal flexion and this big hoo-ha about you shouldn't be doing it? Because people confuse crunches with sit-ups, and you have seen this everywhere. I've seen emails coming in saying avoid crunches and sit-ups. People just throw these two exercises in together. They are similar, but they're also completely different because of the range of movement. Sit-ups do have a massive amount of excessive spinal flexion. People also do thousands of sit-ups, okay? So the point is they throw those two together, and many research studies I've seen talked about sit-ups more so than crunches. So if a crunch is done properly, there's nowhere near the spinal flexion of a sit-up. Sit-ups can be very bad for you if you're not strong enough and you don't know how to do them properly and if you do a lot of them. So let's move on to the final part of this video. I haven't done crunches for quite some time and you should ask yourself, should you be doing crunches or not? So after reading all the research about this and having done crunches and abdominal exercises for the last 15 years, I came to the same conclusion as the NACA, which is the National Strength and Conditioning Association, which is this. Crunches aren't dangerous for you. However, it's just too easy, okay? And that's why I haven't done crunches myself for many years, probably three years now. That doesn't mean I don't include it in my programs, especially beginner programs, because it is still a great exercise just to get you going. But whether you should be doing crunches or not depend on why you're doing crunches. Do you actually want to develop your abdominal wall? Are you a beginner? If you answer yes to those two things, then crunches might be a good beginner exercise to start with. However, this is where you hear people say, you never have to do crunches to get six-pack abs. If your reason why you don't have six-pack abs is you have excessive amounts of belly fat that you still need to get rid of, then doing crunches is never going to help you get rid of belly fat because it's a very isolated exercise. And unless you combine it with many other exercises, it's just going to increase your strength and if you obviously have a muscle building diet with it, help you develop your abdominal wall, especially your rectus abdominis, which is your six pack muscles that we all see. However, if you need to lose belly fat, you might want to look more at things like we do in a six-week six-pack challenge because that program is designed to actually help you lose belly fat. And those are things like high-intensity weight training workouts, any kind of workout that's going to help you burn fat because that should be your main focus. And no matter how many uh, crunches you do or sit-ups you do, it's not going to help you actually lose belly fat. So crunches is right for you if you're a beginner, okay? And if you actually want to strengthen and build your six pack or abdominal wall, your rectus abdominis, whatever you want to call it, okay? Then crunches are good for you. And if you do it rightly, there's no issues with crunches. It's not dangerous. However, within a week or two, it's going to become too easy for you. And you then want to move on to things that's harder and tougher and that's going to hit your wall even better. And today, if you go to this link here, I will show you five of my most favorite abdominal exercises that I bring into most of my challenges and programs. Click on that link and go check them out. Nothing to buy over there. So guys, there is everything you need to know about crunches. Now you never have to worry about whether you should or shouldn't be doing them, and now you how to do them properly as well. As always, if you like this video, click on the like button, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, and until next time, keep it simple and keep it fun. Bye-bye.